Hello, snackers. If you haven't heard, HashiCorp and Cisco Intersight entered into a big partnership just recently. To learn more, stay tuned to episode 16 of DevNet Snack Minutes, where we talk all about it. Hello, Snackers. My name is Kareem Iskander. I'm a developer advocate with Cisco DevNet. Hey everyone, Matt DiNapoli here. I'm a manager of developer advocacy with Cisco DevNet. Welcome to episode 16 of DevNet Snack Minute. If you're new to DevNet Snack Minutes, this is your weekly 10 minute all things DevNet where we cover APIs, coding, or just some cool stuff that you may want to know. And the cool stuff that you may want to know today is the new partnership between Cisco and HashiCorp. And we have our guest, Andrew. Andrew, if you don't mind introducing yourself. Hey guys, name is Andrew Horrigan. I'm a product manager here for uh, Cisco Intersight, and I'm helping with the new partnership between HashiCorp and Cisco. Awesome, man. Thanks for joining us. So uh, tell me, first of all, why is this partnership exciting and important for both HashiCorp and Cisco? Yeah, so, you know, the first thing that we kind of have to uh, combat here at Cisco is the notion that, you know, maybe we're not playing as nicely with open source tools and and sort of infrastructure as code providers. And this partnership really just kind of recognizes our place in that sort of world. Uh, and so when we were looking for a, a partner to help us address infrastructure as code need uh, with our customers, you know, HashiCorp is the foremost leader in that space. And so this was really, um, you know, two industry leaders, uh, one being, you know, an infrastructure provider and the other being a configurator of infrastructure, uh, really recognizing some synergy in the market. I like that. I like the, the keyword configurator. Um, Andrew, how, how exactly does Cisco intend to integrate Intersight with uh, Terraform Cloud for uh, Business? Yeah, so the, the first thing that I like to call out is that we don't want to get in the way of what Terraform offers. So if you look at a lot of different, um, I'll call them solutions on the marketplace, they take a, a fairly opinionated approach on, on how to do infrastructure as code. And, and we really wanted to acknowledge that Terraform and what they're doing with, with Terraform or HashiCorp and what they're doing with Terraform is, is like the best way to do infrastructure as management. Uh, infrastructure as code management. And so our integration is really just helping IT operators uh, provide a bit of an on-ramp into the data center. You know, one of the things that um, we've seen to be a little bit of a challenge is that there's a, a really strong interest to want to use tools like, you know, Terraform or Ansible, especially those cloud-based tools, uh, but there's a challenge getting them integrated into the environment. And so really what we're hoping to build is an on-ramp for those uh, for those IT operators so that developers can cons can start consuming on-prem resources. Yeah, that's been really exciting for us at DevNet because we kind of live in that open source space or at least try to as much as we can. And we talk about writing code in Python and um, Ansible's kind of been in our wheelhouse uh, for a long time. And, you know, as we were seeing kind of Terraform ramping up in Cisco, we got excited because we've been aware of Terraform in, in you know, ways, shapes and forms for, you know, five or six years now, uh, but really haven't been able to take full advantage of it. And so this is crazy exciting for, for us here at DevNet. Uh, but the thing that I'm curious about is why the focus on Terraform Cloud for Business and not necessarily Terraform Enterprise or even where we kind of are, are comfortable Terraform um, open source? Yeah, so that's a really good question. It's one that we get a lot. Um, you know, a lot of people start their Terraform journey in the open source world. Um, I, I was one of them, right? I was in the lab and they were, you know, I was being told, go stand up workloads, go stand up infrastructure. You start poking and prodding with uh, with the open source tools. Um, and the first thing you really realize is that there's not a lot of scaffolding in place. And so by scaffolding, I really mean what happens when you want to start sharing your code with other people or what happens when you have a shared environment where the state file is, is you know, something that you need to be cognizant of. Um, secrets management is another one. These are all things that um, Terraform open source doesn't really take into consideration. Um, so while it's really good for personal use, what you end up seeing is a lot of enterprises will start, again, bolting on the scaffolding to kind of take care of all those different, um, those shortcomings, if you will, of the product. And suddenly, 
you see this more often than not, you're paying almost the price of a full-time employee to basically manage Terraform open source, when in fact, you could just have skipped all those in-between steps and gone directly to Terraform Cloud. So HashiCorp has built this amazing platform. Um, in fact, it's, it's you know, Terraform Cloud itself is free just for state backup. So, you know, one of the things that's pretty exciting is like, don't even, don't even bother with some of these open source implementations and workarounds, just go and dump your, your state file in Terraform Cloud. What they've done with Terraform Cloud for business is they've bolted on things like um, SSO, um, you know, uh, team and governance support. Uh, they've got Sentinel in the back end that you can use for policy as code. They've got Vault integration for, uh, for key management. These are all things that, you know, honestly, if, if you're in the business of wanting to do infrastructure as code, you're going to get more immediate value out of that platform than you are kind of like, you know, crawl walking and running your way to an open source solution. All terms that we, we love to hear here at, uh, at DevNet. Um, what does this partnership allow um, for Intersight in the future? And specifically, if you can touch a little bit on um, from a developer's perspective, you know, why should I care about all of this? Yeah, so one of the things that we've noticed is that um, developers have been very comfortable working in the public cloud. They've been, uh, they've been using tools like infrastructure, or sorry, tools like Terraform to do uh, infrastructure as code deployments in the public cloud. But there's been a, a trend to actually kind of take those workloads back on-prem. So, you know, whether it's because of cost or security or data, uh, data gravity, um, you know, some enterprises are realizing, hey, I, I can't do everything in AWS. I can't do everything in Azure. And so they're telling their developers or DevOps teams, you need to come back on-prem. You, you need to consume on-prem resources. Well, with the challenge of doing that is I can't consume on-prem resources the same way I consume public cloud resources. So while HashiCorp and Terraform work really well with AWS, um, there's no great way maybe necessarily to do that on-prem. So what we're really building with this Intersight integration is that on-ramp into the private data center such that your developers can suddenly start consuming the on-prem resources in a zero-touch way like they're consuming the public cloud resources. The other reason this is important is because if I'm an IT operator today um, and I'm spending all my time kind of integrating all these tools, I can't spend my time learning all these tools. So if we remove that sort of barrier to entry and I no longer need to deal with maintaining these agents or firewall rules or governance and access for given um, infrastructure's code, uh, you know, um, uh, code itself, right? I, as the IT operator, can suddenly start to up-level my own skills. So if you're someone who's listening, who's thought, oh, I would really like to use Terraform. I really think Terraform would be applicable in my ACI environment or in my, you know, with my firewalls, et cetera. But you've never really had the time because you're, you're being tasked with maintaining all these integrations and tools. Well, we're removing that sort of complexity and we're allowing you to focus on that instead. So does that end up making Intersight not just managing compute, but a, a whole host of other infrastructure in the networking space as well? Yeah. So for those of you who aren't aware, Intersight is a it's a hybrid cloud operating platform. So it's a it's a collection of services that fundamentally change the way that you interact with your private data center and your hybrid cloud sort of environment. So you know if if um, if you can use infrastructure as code in your on-prem environment, uh, now suddenly you've also got a platform that's going to help you do monitoring and op. op optimization of those resources. So Intersight is looking at, at doing bare metal provisioning, which is something that Terraform doesn't do today, but it's also looking at the optimization of your resources with uh, you know, Intersight Workload Optimizer. So we've got this full end-to-end -end spectrum that you know it kind of have a little bit of a gap in the middle with infrastructure's code, and that's what we're bringing to the table with Terraform. Oh, that's very cool. Thank you for that. That's <laughs> wonderful. Andrew, I appreciate your time. Uh, before I let you go, we ask our guests a question, and uh, it's not has nothing to do with Intersight or Terraform. Uh, <laughs> but uh, if you have, if you have to choose one superpower, uh, what would that be, and why? So I'm gonna I'm gonna have to go with recency bias here a little bit. But we just watched uh, Sherlock Holmes on Netflix, and I've always thought it'd be cool to to be uh, maybe lucky or just like super intuitive. So you know, being able to walk in a room and just kind of like pinprick and kind of, you know, see all these different things kind of interact and connect together without, you know, really thinking about it, that super intelligence, I think that would be pretty neat. I don't know if that's a superpower, but it's a good way for me to get promoted at Cisco. So I, I kind of have to go with it. <laughs> that's a good point. That's an excellent superpower. Uh, Andrew, thank you for spending time with us today. 
And uh, we look forward to this, this uh, partnership with uh, Cisco and HashiCorp. Uh, thank you, Snackers, for your time. And join us next week. Thank you. Thanks, guys.